Okay, so it is 6 p.m. and I, we have the, we have, I'm recording. I forgot to record the one last week. I was so sad. And we're recording and everyone can see my screen now, correct? You can see the TH502, TH100, correct? So great. Um, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just, we come before you tonight and we ask forgiveness of our sins. As we contemplate who you are, that you're the great king, the Lord of the universe, we just, um, we fail every day. We ask for forgiveness of our sins. We ask for the strength to do your will. Fill us with your spirit, Father, and we just commit this time to you. May it be profitable. May you give the, the students wisdom and insight. I ask and pray that you would give them guidance as we study these deep truths concerning structure analysis. Father, may this not be for our pride, may this not be for our own glory, but for the glory of your Son, for you. May as we study these deep truths and understand literally what your Word says, that we, may we expound, uh, expand, and explain so that others can, can see truth and be transformed. And Father, we know that, it, that our transformation only comes through the Gospel and your Word. And so we just commit this time to you. Encourage the students, help them not to be stressed, and we ask for your blessing now in this time. It's in Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things by faith alone. Amen. Okay, so welcome to session, I believe it's session number nine or ten. I, I, I was actually tempted to, to cancel the class this week because we have our annual Converge uh, meeting. Asia meetings. So I've been in meetings all, I'm going to be in meetings all week, but someone was asking me and my comment was the show must go on. <laughs> the, show, the show must go on. So we are going to meet tonight and by God's grace tomorrow night and then I'll crash on, on Thursday. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad that you all can make it in and I'm sure more will be coming. We do have two, a couple new, uh, um, visitors with us, I think some from outside of Region 8, and so welcome uh, Peter, Paul, Ronaldo, you don't have to uh, say anything, but we just we're so thankful for you to be here, and there was some uh, technical issues last week that he wasn't able to attend, and so we're just glad to see Peter here, and maybe later Wilson will attend, if not next week. So anyway, without further ado, we want to get back into what we were studying last week and continue the practice that we had last week. So uh, for those of you who, are, who, who have the handout, the structure analysis, intra sentence analysis, so intra referring to the inside, salo, the inside of the sentence. And so we're analyzing the, the sentence, we're really going down to the parts and the benefit of really understanding the parts is we can understand relationships, we can identify great truths that that might be clear, might not be clear, but maybe even will just come, uh, just become very clear to us. And, and the reason for doing this is that a lot of times we, we do understand the language, we understand communication, but this is really going to highlight those truths that might not be readily apparent to us. And then we will put those truths before the people. We will put those truths before the people. And so really this is an expansion from last week. I'm not going to give new content. I do feel that some people were overwhelmed, and so we're just going to go back. I'm going to review some of this this uh, handout just very briefly. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, and then we're just going to get back into the Word and just practice. We're just going to practice. Uh, hopefully, it, it, we'll be able to post the videos soon, and then, uh, of course, you always have the live now. The live is being recorded. will be in this group, and so the benefit is for you to is for us to just really practice, to really uh, continue to practice, um, and just to really become saturated with, with this. And uh, the most beautiful buildings, the most, the strongest structures are 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 those buildings that are that are that have a good structure and and someone who knows the structure. So the best buildings are those engineers that really understand um, st uh, structural design steel and concrete and so in many ways there, there's an analogy there with what we're doing. Uh, thankfully we don't have to build the structure all we're all that we are doing is we're just identifying the structure 
and we're just going to analyze it and then put that before the people. Um, okay, so let's just go through this PowerPoint. I mean, not this PowerPoint, but this handout. I'm just gonna highlight, we went through it last week. I just want to review. And I posted a revised, I posted a revised um, copy. So hopefully you will see this. And so let me just make this so that everyone can see here. So everyone should be able to see this. And so uh, again, if you, if you downloaded the, the handout from, from the group, if you received an email, you can print it out and use it as a tool, or you can just use it on your iPad or on your computer and you have the quick links here. And so really what we're looking at is, uh, there's really three parts to this outline. Look, big, looking at a big picture. Number one, we're looking at foundational intra-sentence parts. So inside, again, in, just think intra inside. Inter is between two. Uh, intra is inside. So you could even just write out uh, inside the sentence. So the foundational components of the sentence are verb, actor, and object. And so uh, we just give you some of the locations of where they can be found. And then also, um, also uh, um, the different types, the different types of verbs. And it looks like I still have a, an issue here. I thought I fixed this, so again, I apologize. This big, this big describing foundational sentence part should be above this. Uh, so this should be, this should be a step above. So there is an, an issue in the, uh, I have, to, I have to fix that, maybe just update. So, but this should be above. So you, you have the foundational, we have the foundational intra sentence parts, and then we have describing those foundational sentence parts. That's the second part. And so you have describing verbs and then also describing person, places, things, or concepts. And then we have the last section, which is connecting, which is connecting two sentences. So again, here is the big picture. If, for those who are attending for the first time, the big picture, if, if we can give you a, a picture of what we're doing so you can see the structure. Essentially, you have two sentences here. You have one on the left, one on the right. Within each sentence, every sentence will typically have at least a subject and a verb, but most of the time it's going to be an actor, subject, verb, or object. Okay, you're gonna have these three fun fundamental components. Okay, and this is so important, dealing with the gospel, dealing with salvation, dealing with different truths. Uh, again, repeating Martin Luther's famous quote, theology is grammar applied. And so this is not a gram grammatical analysis because gram grammar is, is really even a step deeper, but we're just looking at those big parts and logically identifying them. And for the most part, they're gonna be the same. So you have an actor, you have a verb or an action, and then you also have the object. And then the, the components that are describing these foundational uh, components are, in, in grammar, you would call them adjectives or adverbs. We're just calling them describing verbs or describing person, places, or thing, or a person, place, or thing. So, an object or an actor will have a word that describes them, and then a verb also has a, a word that describes or qualifies them. And these could be words, these could be phrases, or these could be clauses, okay? Um, and so then we just talk through the, the different types of verbs, and, and so those different types of verbs, they could be commands, they could be a knowing statement. So a knowing statement is not an action, it's just simply, an act. I'm sorry, the most fundamental or basic is typically an action. So the most common is an action. I skipped it. And then, of course, you can have a command. Then you can have a knowing statement. So there's no action being done. It's just what is it that someone knows? Or what is it something that, what is it that someone wants you to know? Okay. There's, there's linking verbs. They're just connecting to, uh, typically a subject with some type of description. Those are linking. 
There's prohibition verbs. So it's, 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 it's uh, prohibiting something. Now in the prohibition, typically I'm just gonna combine the negative, the do not harden, really the verb is just do harden and then the not is an adverb. But again, this is not a grammatical analysis. You're just identifying that verbal idea. And so the verbal idea is do not harden, okay? So I'm making it easier for you. You don't have to split out, you know, helping verb, adverb. You just, what is that verbal action? Well, the, it's, it's, a, it's a negative command. It's a prohibition. Do not harden. So there's an example there um, for you. Um, and then you can have stative verbs. Stative verbs simply give you the state of be, a being of something. A state of being can be where it is, um, how it feels. And so you have many different stative type verbs. And then we are, we are identifying a statement, even though you could say a statement is a verbal action. Fair enough, you could identify it as action. It is a different type of action because it's speech. And the most important action of speech is the word of God. So when God speaks, so we want to highlight those as we're studying, we want to highlight those. You can have requests. And then also, this was the new category that I added, desire. So uh, we can have this idea of a desire. It's not an action. It's not a thought. It's not a, uh, a command. It's not a request. It's this desire. So I desire, Paul declares in 1 Timothy 2.8, I desire then that in every place that men should pray. So Paul has this desire, this want for something to occur. After verbs, we have actors. So within the actors, uh, um, primarily here, you're just identifying who is doing the action. Who is doing the action? So it's very simple. You're going to look in the sentence, and you're going to ask the question. You first identify the verb, and then you say, who is the one doing the action? Okay? And so typically, when you don't have to know grammar. You just have to know logic. Uh, so it's easy. You don't have to look it up, okay? You're just looking at who's doing the actor. And then you're, you're going to put that before the people, okay? Now, if it's a state of verb or it's a, a non-action type verb, you're just going to identify it as the subject. Because, again, actor describes act. In actor, just a quick clarification here. Maybe you want to make a note here. Uh, actor, that's describing act just like action it's doing the act okay so if it's not if there isn't an action you would just want to identify subject because because there, if there's no action you're just still saying who is being described what is the primary person that's that's being involved so you would just either use actor or subject okay. uh, moving along here you have an actor you have a, a, an action or a verb and then you have an object so there's typically going to be an object, someone that's receiving the action, receiving the action. And they can either directly receive it or they can indirectly receive it. Okay, so in the first example, Lord save me. Uh, um, Peter is asking to be saved. He's asking for Jesus to be the one to act, to, to save him. Okay, so the, the request is for him, for, for someone to do an act on himself, hence the object, the one receiving the action. And then an indirect object is someone who, who, who is receiving the action in an indirect way. So look at this example here. And he would have given to you living water. So the one who is receiving the action is both the you and also the, the water is the one that's being given, okay? So both are the object one is receiving it in an indirect way, and then the water is actually the thing that's really the action's being done to, because there's Jesus who is uh, uh, Jesus who is giving the, the living water to the Samaritan, the Samaritan woman. Okay, and the living water is literally the one that's receiving that action, transferring from Jesus to the Samaritan woman. And then the other idea is that of a content. So typically in knowing statements, the, the type of object will be a content. I want you to know what, that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, okay? 
And just as a caveat, sometimes the object can be in the subject. So for by him, all things were created. All things is not the actor. Okay, and actually the actor is God himself. God is not explicitly mentioned here. Okay, but you need to be aware that sometimes the, the actor or the object can be in the subject. Okay. And now moving along here to the next section, we have uh, describing foundational sentence parts. And so you have those three foundational components, actor or subject, action or verb, and then object, okay? And now what we're going into is these words and phrases and, and clauses that actually describe these foundational components. So these themselves are not the foundational components, okay? And so the first section is describing verbs. And so all of these categories will be qualifying, describing, highlighting the verb in some way, okay? So you can have uh, words, phrases, or clauses giving advantage or disadvantage. How, is the action, who is it benefiting it or who is it hurting? We can think of that. Who is the action benefiting or hurting, okay? Uh, agent, so sometimes it's going to give the agent by which the action is made. But again, the agent is not the, is not the source of the action, okay? Uh, association, uh, cause, so you have a, a, a association is, is accompaniment oftentimes or like some type of relationship. Cause is the reason behind the action. So it's giving us a reason and that's very important theologically in some cases. There can be a comparison. So here, be kind one to another, forgiving each other just as God in Christ forgave you or has forgiven you. And so here, there's a command to be kind and to forgive and the comparison by which we need to forgive is the fact that God has forgiven us, therefore we need to forgive others. And actually you could, in this comparison, there is a sense of a causal as well, or a reason as well, right? Uh, there is that sense. Um, but, but here it's pretty much a comparison. If, if God forgives us in Christ, we have to forgive each other. Okay, so there's that comparison there. So it's, that's very practical especially for someone who's having a fight. <laughs> very practical, very practical. Um, we can talk about conditions. So a condition has to be met before the action occurs or before there's, there's the, main, the main verb is able to be accomplished. There's concessive. We talked about this before. It's, it, it seems to be contrary to logic. It seems to be contrary to reality, but in the fact it is. Okay, so uh, concessive is um, something doesn't appear to be the case, but in actuality, both are true. So although Jesus was a son, he learned obedience. We would not think that he needed to learn obedience because he's a son. But in fact, even though he was the son of God, he still learned obedience. So both are true. We can have location. We can have manner. Manner is the, is the way or the, the, the manner by which an action occurs. We can, we can do an action angrily we can do it happily we can do it peacefully <laughs> we can do it with thanksgiving we can do an action with grumbling so these are manners these are the 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 way by which an action is carried out sometimes it's an emotion sometimes it's this uh emotive state okay we refer to that as manner uh, means is typically the instrument by which an action is carried out so whereas we are to, to pray in a, in, a, in a state, in a manner of thanksgiving, the means by which we are to make a request be made known is through prayer and supplication. So the means is prayer and supplication to give our request to God, and we're to do it with a thanksgiving, a thankful heart. We can have opposition. We can have purpose. Again, uh, I would encourage you to practice these, to review this on your own. We can have reference, we can have result, uh, separation. Uh, so these are, these are just, uh, we can have spatial. So this is like moving into a space. They went into the synagogue. So that's a spatial motion. There's a standard. So we are to live in accordance, 
to the spirit, so in the, in, in the standard of the spirit, or um, in agreement with what the spirit is calling us to do, or, or how the spirit calls us to live. Uh, so there's substitution. So again, these are just a lot of different categories for us to identify how the different parts of a sentence are functioning. What is the specific truth that this word or phrase is contributing to the statement? And how does that apply to us and to our audience? Is everyone tracking with me? Any, any questions? Is this making sense? Dean? Yes. Dean? yes. This falls under the describing verb? Yes, describing verbs, yeah. Location, location is under a verb, huh? It's, well, it's, it's describing the verb. So let, let's go back to location. Let's, let's look at the specific example. Let's think about this uh, briefly, okay? So, so uh, let's think about this. Um, what we want to ask is ignore, ignore the, the, the where and the location for a minute. The, the, the statement is, but where there is no law, there is no transgression, okay? So this is a statement. There is no transgression, okay? That's a, that's, that's a statement concerning maybe a state of being. It's not, it's not an action. It's just a statement of reality. There is no transgression, okay? But is that the case? Is that the case in every context? Is that the case... Using this as an example, Henry, I hope that we can, we can begin to understand how, how, how we do this, okay? So we have the statement here, where there is no law, there is no transgression. So that's the statement, okay? That, that's what's being said, okay? Oh, I lost Henry. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll just talk through here. Um, so we, we, have this, we have this statement here, okay? And so we can identify, if I'm working on this, I can identify that this is the main idea. And the reason why we know that this is the main verbal idea or the main is because this, this can stand alone. A, a, a clause has to be able to stand alone. Okay, so, so we know that if we're just looking at, if, if we're just looking at where, the, if we just look first at this, this clause, this does not, this cannot stand alone. Think about this as a, as a statement, where there is no law. That's incomplete, okay? If we, just say, if we just say there is no transgression, that's a complete thought without qualification, okay? So what we can say, we, we can say is that this is the, is the main sentence, okay? And this is really the, the main, this is, This is the main verbal idea, okay? And it's a state, okay? So then, so then coming back to here, we want to ask the question, how does this relate to this? We're asking that question, okay, Henry? Where there is no law, there is no transgression, okay? So this, this clause right here, Diba, this is, this is qualifying... Or we could say clarifying this statement, right? There is no transgression. Well, that's not true. There is transgression. People sin all the time, okay? So, so, there, so the, the first clause is going to provide a, again, we're thinking logically. The first clause must be providing a qualification to the main verb, there is no transgression. Okay, and so then we have to ask the question, how is it being clarified? How is it being qualified? And so what I, what I do is if I, look, if I look here at this word, what is that word? Well, where? That's, that's providing a location, Diba. Just logically, where? When would be providing time. 
who will be providing, providing a person. So this is giving us a location, okay? And so what we're simply saying here is in describing, so th this is describing verbs. What we're saying is there's words, clauses, and phrases that are qualifying this verbal idea. So, so, so you're correct in saying that location does not, it's not a verbal statement, but it is a qualifying statement. So maybe if you want to think of describing or qualifying or clarifying, that becomes very helpful. Does, does that make sense? So the big theological yeah. truth. Go ahead, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. No. So I, I and I belabor this point because Henry's asking a question, but I think all of us wrestle. For me, in the past, I wrestled with that. So, so it's a very helpful question. Thank you for asking, it, Henry. What I want us to be thinking about is that theologically, though, this is a this is a very important statement because what this is saying is is that um, if there is no law, there is no transgression, and if there is no transgression, God cannot bring judgment, right? There has to be a law, there has to be a standard so that there can be either a, an obedience or a disobedience. I cannot discipline my child if I do not give her a command. Viva. She could be going around ripping up my books, she could be breaking my screens. If I never told her, do not break my screen, I can't discipline her. So this is a this is a this is a fundamental, this is a foundational theological truth that. The reason why God can, can punish, the reason why God can judge, is because there has to be a law. <laughs> so I, I hope that we're, we're seeing that this is a lot of work. This is deep. I understand it's deep. Maybe it's giving you a headache. I understand that. But, but there's, there's great truths that are being taught, and we're just identifying them. Okay, let's go back to... Um, let's uh, go back. Yeah, okay, last. In Genesis, in Genesis... The law, the first law that God has given to Adam was not to eat, not to eat. It's Genesis chapter 3, verse 3. That's the first law. Yeah, so that's the first, that's the, yeah, that's the first explicit law in the text, yes. Okay, so if going back, verse 3, Genesis 3, 3, you shall not eat, this is the... The, the the describing you shall that's that's a prohibition that's a command it's, it's a negative command so it's a okay 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 continue yeah, so so again what, what was really helpful the, the law can have positive commands and negative commands prohibitions and commands so think about it the the, the two greatest commandments are Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two greatest commandments. All the other commandments hang on those two laws. But then when we look at the Decalogue, there's a bunch of prohibitions. <laughs> you shall have no other gods before you. You shall keep the Sabbath holy. Um, do not covet. Do not murder. Do not steal. So, so again, the law commands can be positive and negative. Yeah, great, great question. And, and I hope that we're, I hope that we're thinking about. We're, I hope that we're thinking about bringing in, you're seeing how hermeneutics is being applied to theology, being applied to the text. Great question, Henry. Okay, let's go on. I, I, I want to move along here. Hey, so Ting. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Hello, Tim. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, this is Alex. I hope my line is not that choppy. Yeah. Good. In criminal law, there is an analogy with that text that you're saying. No long criminal upon na sinilege. There is no crime when there is no law punishing it. So by God's grace, I find it not that hard what you're saying right now. It, it really makes sense. When there's no law, then there's no point of punishing the same. So I believe, the way, uh, the way I believe, that the criminal law that we have right now, it, it's taken from that text, no. from that context. Excellent observation alex and i think someone else had made that maybe koya boy in a different class had had made the same had made the same correlation excellent observation 
our law is analogous to God's law. And, and I'm going to say one other thing, because so Henry mentioned, just for you to think about, Henry mentioned that, that the first explicit law is do not eat. And, and that would be an explicit command, although there is a positive command in the be fruitful, multiply, have dominion, subdue. So, so, so I would say those are also commands. Now, there's debate because people will say that's the covenant of creation. Adam was the, the Adamic covenant was the, the covenant with Adam. So there's debate there. But, but, but what I, so, so it could be more than just that first command. Um, the other thing I want to say is that in, in the gospel, Paul actually says that the law is written on our hearts. So even if we don't have the Mosaic law, everyone is still accountable because God's law is written on the heart of man. Anyway, that's, that's a deeper, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that because that really makes all men guilty, even in the distant tribal uh, place, because people will say, how is it fair for them? Because they don't have a law. And, and, and Paul's response, which would be the word of God's response, which would be my response is, well, no, God's law is written on man's heart. And so there is this internal eternal law written on man's heart just a thought think about it uh, um and that comes back to what alex said that you have to have a law to punish so anyway i don't want to belabor that point um that's yeah just I, just to add into that thing it's quite interesting because it makes it gives what's really the one of the characteristic of a god that we worship although he's powerful and sovereign he's not it does not make things arbitrarily. He respects due process of law, notice and hearing and things like that. He himself exemplifies that perfectly. So that's, that's very wonderful. No, that's good. Excellent observation, Alex. Thank you. Great. Okay, let's, let's go on. If there's no other questions, you can interrupt me. I do want to move quickly here. So again, we reviewed this. This is a review from last week. I'm just repeating these things to kind of familiarize ourselves before we get into the text. So we have all of these different categories for describing verbs. And then we have, um, okay, there's time as well. So there's a lot. There's time is the last one, okay? Now we have uh, describing person, places, or things. Or these could be adjectives. These could be now. Uh, these could be adjectives. These could be words, phrases, or clause that describe nouns. And a noun is a, a person, place, thing, or concept. So I'm just, I'm not giving you the word noun because we're not in grammar but we're just thinking about describing persons, places, things, or concepts, all right? And so again, there's all these different categories. There's just the most fundamental. It's a description. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And so uh, who is the one who has been born? Everyone who believes. So it's very, it's, it's a description. It's, and, and Bull Boy brought up the point that it could also be a condition. And in a sense, descriptions are conditions. The, the description is limiting a parameter. So um, uh, that is the case, but we still want to maintain those categories. We can, we can think uh, by way of semantics or by implication, a condition, but we do want to just, we want to keep the categories in their appropriate places. Otherwise it becomes very confusing is what I'm trying to get at. Um, so you can have a description, you can have a rename. So there is a man sent from God whose name was John. So whose name was John renames a man who is sent from God. Uh, you can have clarification. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. So really clarifying or becoming more specific. What are those things that the spirit searches? The deep things of God. So maybe you're thinking that it's not the deep things of God not included. It's like, no, 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 no. It searches all things even the deep things of God. So again, this is a, the a deep theological truth and highlighting this really uh, is beneficial to, to ourselves and also to our, our hearers, our, our members. Um, you can have possession. Uh, Thomas said, my Lord, my God. So it's uh, possession we can think of. No, he's uh, not in a way of Thomas being the Lord of Christ, but really making Jesus his own. So there's this experiential relationship. When Thomas says, my Lord, my God, he is, he is uh, attaching himself to Jesus. He is, uh, he is entering in this relationship. Um, and so it's very powerful, very powerful, even though it's a very simple statement. 
Um, and then of course you can have uh, relationship. Uh, and so the word describes some form of personal relationship, relationship with the, the word that is related. So we, we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's describing a relationship, how God is relating. Now, some people would say, oh, it's a clarification or a renaming. We give th thanks to God. Which God? Our Father and Lord. Fair enough. So, again, I hope we can also see that these are not black and white categories. Maybe you're going to have a different category. And, and this is just giving us a guide to further quantify, qualify, explain the text. So it's not a black and white issue. Um, we can have source. And that's pretty much it. Maybe you, you can think of another category. You can add it. And if it's a good category, send me a message and we can add it as well. And then lastly, we just have connecting sentences. So these are connecting words. Two sentences can be placed in a relationship and it's through a connecting word. So the big ideas are alternative, contrast, emphatic. Uh, it could also be explanatory, inferential, or inference, uh, progression, uh, series, transitional. So these, again, are different categories. And so really the only way for you to become good at these would be for you to read through them and then just really start practicing with them, okay? In my class in seminary, we had like a test, and my teacher would test us on these. So I'm not going to do that to you. But in some ways, that's what it will take for you to become good in these categories. And, and then we're just going to be then using these in our teaching. Here we are. If you want to turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 1, verses 16 to 17. So what I'm going to do is, whew, I'm just going to quickly review. So we identified every word or every uh, phrase. We're, 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 we're giving some type of relationship here, okay? And so we, uh, we identified I am not ashamed as a state. This is a state of being. It's with reference to the gospel. The subject is Paul. Uh, and then the relationship is this idea. We, we notice that there is a, the second clause is qualifying the first in some way. And that way is a cause. So, so the second clause for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That's qualifying or giving the reason, the cause by which Paul is not ashamed. Okay. And, and we, we notice a description within here. We have the, the gospel is the power of God. So what is the description or what is the relationship? What, what, what is the gospel? Why is it that the gospel does not bring shame but confidence to Paul's life? And the reason is that the gospel contains the power of God. In relationship to what? For what purpose? Or with reference to what? So here, actually, you could also have a reference. We had it as a purpose, the power of God for salvation. Um, but you maybe you could have reference, but I would want I would want to go I would want to go with with purpose. With purpose there. It's for salvation. And then who is it concerning? Who is it concerning? It's concerning everyone, but there's a condition or there's a description. It's not everyone unconditionally, it's not everyone without qualification. There is a qualification, and that qualification is everyone who believes, okay? Now you will notice within this clause, there is, a, there is an action. This belief is a verb, okay? It's not the main verb, but it's, it's providing an action. And then there's a further clarification to the Jew first and also to the Greek, okay? So that's, that's, that's where as far as we got. And so now we're gonna go to the next sentence. Verse 17, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. From faith for faith. So I'm just going to again work 
word by word how I would do it. I would really recommend you take notes on how I do it and just follow my example. So the first thing I'm going to do is I always look for the main verb. I'm always looking for the main verb. Here, what is the main verb? So I'm asking the question, what is the main verb? So I would not go to, to, to the actor. I would not go to other things. I, the, typically, the verb is the biggest word in the sentence. So you want to work from big to small. It'll be much easier than trying to just pick one word at a time because you could get confusing. So when I look logically, what is the main verb? I notice here that you have this, th these two words, is revealed, is revealed, okay? Does everyone see why I chose that? Is revealed. So then I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna go back to my, let me just fix this here so it's quicker for us to click. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my, to my handout. Let's just go back to the beginning here. So I'm gonna go, I've identified the verb and I wanna ask what kind of verb. So what I would do is I would just go to this handout and I would go and I would just start going down each one. Until I became comfortable, I would just go each one. Uh, number one category. It is the process of accomplishing something or typically the accomplishment of a task or aim. Action. So then I come back to my word, is revealed. Is is revealed an action? Yes, right? Just logically, is revealed. That sounds like an action. So I'm just going to identify it as an action. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, I will always go to the second thing. I'm going to ask, where is the actor? If there's an action, there has to be an actor. Okay, there has to be an actor. So when I look here, I'm going to read through here. And I'm going to ask the question, is there an actor? For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. So is there an actor? I don't see an actor because the actor is going to be doing the action, right? So at this point, there's no explicit actor. So let me just put a note here. I'm going to put a... And I'm not going to answer it, right? There's no explicit actor, okay? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, is there an object? So is there an object? Remember, the object receives the action in some way. What is the word or phrase? What is the word or phrase of the... Of the uh, that's receiving this action of being revealed? That's my question. And so looking here, I can say, oh, what is being revealed? I can answer that. Righteousness is being revealed, right? The righteousness of God is being revealed. So I'm going to underline this is my object. Is everyone tracking with me why I did that? It makes sense, right? So the, the, righteousness, the righteousness of God is revealed, okay? So then I'm going to look at, I have, I have, looks like I have two, I have three phrases here. So I'm just going to highlight them. Unless they're directly describing a noun, if they're just kind of out there without describing a noun, the person, place, or thing, I go, my default will be the describing verbs, okay? So, so this is going to be qualifying the verb. This is going to be qualifying the verb. This is going to be qualifying the verb. Everyone tracking with me? There's no, there's no noun that it's connected to. It's just kind of out there. All right, everyone tracking with me? 
so everyone understands what, what I did, okay? Everyone's tracking with me? We, we need to ask now, what are the categories here? The word in it. Now, before, before I identify the category, I always want to highlight, I always want to highlight the pronouns. The it, what is the it? We've already identified it as the gospel, and so that hasn't changed. So this is, again, this would be gospel. So this helps, this helps for your readers. This will help your listeners. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. Oh, in the gospel, then we can, we can, who reveals, who reveals in the gospel? I know that. It's God, right? It's God. And we know that because we can go back to the preceding context to Romans 1, 1 to 2, because it says that God, uh, God spoke, uh, God promised, Beforehand, in the prophetic writings, or maybe it's through the prophets, Romans 1, uh, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Okay, so God is clearly the one speaking. So, so here, if the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel, the actor is not Jesus, it's not Paul, it's God himself. God is revealing his righteousness in the gospel. So then we have this question, in, it, it, what is that precise relationship? So let's go back. Let's go back to our handout. I'm going to go again back to the beginning. I always start back at the beginning. We're looking at describing verbs now. We're looking at describing verbs. Oh, so I'm going to come back up here. And I'm going to start at the beginning. So what I'm, look, what I'm going to look at now is I'm going to look at in. What type of word is in? Okay. So as I come down here, I'm looking for keywords. I'm looking for keywords. So none there, none there. Let's just keep going here. Uh, with, that doesn't help me. Doesn't help me. I'm gonna keep going down, I'm gonna keep going down. So let's just say we're going, going, going. Ah, location, location, what about location? What about location? Now, we only have one key word here. Maybe I should add a key word. But do you notice how in is providing us a location? Does everyone see that? I don't have the key word in, but do you see how in functions? Satagalog, sa, right? Sa, that's giving location. Sa loob, sa labas, sa bahay, sa cuarto, right? It's, it's giving location. So, so, again, logically speaking, and so we're asking the question, the qualification, where is God revealing the righteousness of God? So we're asking the question, where? Do you see how now the key word is location? Where is the, God, where is the righteousness of God being revealed? Where? In the gospel. Is everyone tracking with me? Is that making sense? Good. So this is all that we're going to be doing, okay? Let's finish out here, okay? Last two and we'll be done. From faith, for faith. So we can go back to our handout. We go through all the, 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 the procedure. I'm not going to do that again. Uh, I'm going to give you a cheat. From faith. So this could be dealing with... Um, a source, um, 
And then for faith. Purpose. Now, there's different debates here. Some people say it's, uh, uh, this is from, uh, this is the faith of God. And this is for our faith. Okay, so the source, it's coming from God. The source by which it's being revealed is God's faithfulness. That's the cause, the source by which he then reveals. All right, that, that's very possible. That's a great, we'll see later if you study Romans, that's true. Other people will say, this is, this is, a, um, this is like a time reference, more logic, from uh, uh, faith, First to last, okay? Uh, that could be in the Old, so this could be in the Old Testament to the New Testament, or this could be uh, from conversion to glorification, living by faith. So this would be OT saints, NT saints. So is everyone tracking how it might not be as clear? But so my perspective, when I preach this, I would not choose one. I think that this is a pregnant idea and Paul, all, all three of these possibilities, one, two, three, all of these can be proven throughout, Roman, throughout Romans. And people say, you got to choose one. And in, the, and in the hermeneutical process, we typically would choose one. But it's just so pregnant. It's so full of information. I want to say, no, all of these concepts are true in the Paul's gospel, all of them can be defended very strongly. And I do think that it's just full it, because, because it's not, it's yes, it's yes, it's yes. Uh, any questions or comments before we take our break? So, so uh, Tim, the, the phrase from faith to faith, how does it uh, relate to the doctrine of, of, of sola fide, like, you know, the reformations? Yeah, so... So, um, from faith for faith would be this here, then. It would be this. Living by faith. It's always been faith. <laughs> by faith you are saved. And, and Paul will talk about that we were saved at the time that we had first faith. And then we're also, we are being saved. So, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. The gospel which I preached, which you received, by which you stand. Uh, no, in on which you are standing, by which you are being saved. And so, and so for, if you're going to say sola fide, from faith for faith, it's, uh, uh, people will say it's that life of faith, both at conversion and then in sanctification. It's a life of repentance and faith that culminates in our glorification. Um, and again, sola fide. So you can also apply that to the old covenant, new covenant. Uh, from faith, from the faith of, of the Old Testament saints to the faith of the New Testament saints. Right? And actually, that's what the argument of Hebrews is making. The hall of faith, their faith is not complete without the perseverance and the running of the New Testament saints. Look at Hebrews 11 to 12. And actually, maybe that could be a proof, a further proof that Paul is the writer of the book of Hebrews because. If, if we're seeing from faith for faith in that similar context, they're actually, Hebrews and Romans is very close together. Um, and in Romans, you have the faith of Abraham is the pattern by which then we also have faith. Is that making sense, Sonny? Is that kind of your question? Uh, from faith, uh, where does where faith come, come from? From man's effort or from God? So, so that would be, that's a great question, Mark, but I don't think that this specific text 
is addressing that question. I think Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 really addresses that question. Romans 12, 3 addresses the question. And also uh, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. And so in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, we're called to lay aside every weight and every sin that easily entangles us and to run the race with patience, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And so if you were to, if you were to ask the question, um, wh where does faith come from? We must say Jesus, <laughs> the author and perfecter. We exercise the faith. We are the ones exercising the faith, but the source of the faith and the perfection of the faith is Jesus himself. So, so yeah, I don't think this particular text, now it, maybe it will, it will be teased out in Romans. So, so 12, Romans 12, 3 gives us the, the source that God is measuring out the faith, right? So Romans answers that question, Mark, but in this particular ta passage, I don't think it clearly specifies um, where that origin actually comes from, although Paul will answer it later. Thank you, Pastor Tim. Great question. These are the type of questions you want to be asking. And Mark, uh, if you were preaching this, you would want to touch on that. You could touch on that, and you can bring in these other passages. Um, but sometimes we have to be careful that that's a question that as we research, we're like, okay, it's beyond the scope of this passage, although we need to touch on it because we're talking about faith. And uh, that's important, but this passage doesn't explicitly answer it. So we want to maintain that in the text, in the text that we're really getting from the text. Let's continue here. Now, what I'm going to do to make this easier is that because there's a, 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 a citation of the word of, of scripture here, I'm actually going to... So when you're when you're exi when you're doing this process as well, you should also break this out uh, because there's going to be two more verbs. That's why, and this is actually a scriptural citation. How would we know that this is a scripture citation? So let me ask the question. Uh, How do we know this? How do we know that this here is a, a, a citation of scripture? The word itself, us. It, because of the citation. Ah, okay, no, good. So, number one, number one, uh, the text specifies it. So we have explicit citation, great, ec excellent. So that's number one. And then a non-biblical reason, but all your Bibles should have. What's the second? If, if you miss this part, what, what would be the second reason? That should give you a, a very clear. What's the second way? Quotation mark. Oh, okay, great. Quotation mark. Excellent. So then we have, we have quotation marks. So we have quotation marks. So... And then what's the third? Third. If you miss the quotation mark, what's the third way that you can be sure? Looking in your Bibles. As it is, as it as is it written. Is written. Yeah, so that's, that's the explicit. That's the explicit here. There's one other way. Is it not mentioned in the footnote? Yeah, in go to the step Bible. Yeah, okay, Step Bible or in the footnote. If you buy the footnote, let, let's go to Step Bible. Let's go to Step Bible. There is a footnote number two after, after by faith. So here, we're looking here, Step Bible. We're going to go Romans 1, 16 to 17. So look here. Yeah. 
H. H here cited, does everyone see this here? Cited Habakkuk 2.4. Okay. So you have the H. The H there. Okay. So that's so there's three ways to know. There's three ways to know. All right. I was just checking to make sure that we're we're all paying attention here. Okay, so let me just okay, great. Okay. So we're gonna look at this first clause here and then we'll look at the other ones. So again, we're looking at we're looking at the main verb. We're looking at the main verb. So I'm going to identify, who wants to try to identify the, the main verb in this first clause? Where's the verb in that phrase? Is. Yeah, so he said is written. That's the verb. What kind of, of verb is it from our list? What kind of verb? Action? Does everyone agree with action? Writing is an action. Written is already done. That's not any word action. So, wait, wait. So, uh, Corey Boba, can you, I missed the part. Go ahead. Written is already done. Yeah, so action is done. Yeah, so you could say, if you want to further clarify, this is a past act. If you want to go deep, past action, right? Good. I'm not requiring that, but if you want to go there, you can in your own, in your own work, okay? As it is written, so then, so then it is the object. Who is the actor? Who is the actor? The righteous. The righteous. God. It's the right. God. The, 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 uh, Danny, so that's the, that's the answer for the next statement. That's, that's the next one. Who is the one that wrote? Who is the one that wrote? God is the writer. And then the agent, if we're going to go really specific, <laughs> yeah, no, well, the, the agent is the, is the prophets, right? And so specifically Habakkuk, right? It's very important. Uh, scripture is not considered the writing of man, Okay. The, the prophets are just the agents by which God speaks and thus writes. That's why it's called the word of God. Okay. What kind of word is, let someone else try. What kind of word is this? Or what's, the, let's, let's ask this. What's the relationship here? Danny? Uh, uh, the time. So as would that so so it, so you're you think it's time. Let's write this down here. So I think it's reference. Someone said reference. But anyone else? Anyone else want to try? Any others? Me? Danny? Uh, uh, Henry? Think. I think. I, I missed state. That's state. It's state. State. Okay. Uh, but state is more for the action. It's more for the verb. This is this. We're looking at. We're looking at a qualification coming back up to here somewhere. So I, it couldn't be state. Because state is, is for a verb. Um, anyone else want to try? 
let, let's look at the options. Let's look at the options. So someone had time. So when I come down to time, describes the time surrounding the main verb. It can be antecedent, contemporary, or subsequent. So the question is, does this word, does as indicate time? I don't think I don't think it does. As we don't really we don't really refer to time as as, and there's no the keyword is not as. So we're the the, the 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 word that we're looking at is this word as. That as is the key word. So if I go back to here to this my handout, and I'm going to go, let's let's go to comparison because I'm thinking as or like. Ah, just as, like, just as God. So perhaps this could be, this could be a comparison. Yeah, it's comparison. Okay, it could be comparison. Now, um, there is one other option here. Let me see what I have. Uh, logically, now this is deep, okay, so I'm not expecting this, but the word that's used there in the original, if we were to go to Step Bible, it, it also in some, in some context can give um, a cause or reason. Now it's debate, it's, it, you know, it's deep, okay? But if, but if, but if we, if, so it could give, it could give uh, cause or reason. So again, let's think logically. Let's think logically here, okay? For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, just as it has been written or as it has been written. So really, this is giving a comparison or we could say, Agreement or there is a sense in which we could say cause, right? Where uh with what is the relationship to this righteousness being revealed? Well, it was revealed in in agreement with, in comparison with, or because the word of God said it. Does everyone see that relationship there? Ask a question if that does not make sense. I don't want to rush this. I want you to think. I don't want you to be stressed. So you could choose comparison or cause. Both are possible. So it's in agreement. It's in agreement with what has been written. The gospel is... Re so let's, let's re... Before we go on, let's rewrite this so it's more clear. Let's rewrite this... So that's so that it's more clear. Sometimes because it's difficult to we, let's write it in a way that's clear. God has revealed his righteousness. in the gospel just like it has been written or because it has been written.
So is everyone tracking with what we're doing here? We're rewording it in a, in a, in a clearer way. Okay, so God has revealed his righteousness in the gospel just like it has been written or because it has been written. So here, this is kind of more of a, a basis. And that makes logical sense. That makes logical sense, correct? That makes logical sense. Boy, boy, uh, and it also, yeah, and it also be more appropriate if we use the word since instead yes. of because or just Excellent. like. Excellent. You're thinking. You're thinking now. You're using your head. Excellent. Because here, these are these are almost synonymous. These are almost synonymous. So you could absolutely use since. Uh, the way it's written, I think since makes more sense than because. Yes. Because no. because usually connotes reason. There must be a reason. There's a reason. Or this is more of the sense of basis. That's right? it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And maybe I'll rethink. Uh, maybe we can add some category because there's a nuance there. Excellent work, oh boy. Excellent work. And I hope so. So I, I hope this is making sense. We're looking at relationships. Don't be stressed. You are going to fall on your face. You're going to get it sometimes. It's fine. But we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Think about the deep truth that's here. God's righteousness is revealed in the gospel. Since it has been written, what is the content of what has been written? So I'm just going to give you the tidbit here. So the relationship from here to here, this is the content. This is the content of what has been written, okay? What? What is the content? So now, Danny, the verb, what's the main verb here? What's the main verb? Shall live. Yes, there you go. Main verb is shall live. Yes, who else said that? I, oh, uh, Ati Milagros. Great work. Team effort. So this is the action. And going off of what Kuya Bullboy was talking about, this is future action. Again, extra information, but it's very helpful. Now, you could say Henry brought up state. You could also say state here. Henry, when you said state, were you thinking about this? When you said state, were you thinking about this here? No, it, it, I was not thinking of that. Shall uh, but this could also be a state because it's not living as, I guess it could be an action. It could also be a state. If we're living, if we exist, it could be a state. I would accept both. You know, maybe this is better. Um, you know, technically the word I believe is, a, is an action word, but there's also a state. Living can also be a state. Your dead is a state. So. It can be a state. Uh, it can be a state team if you look at it in the sense of a vision of a future. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's why I don't want to make a hard line there. I don't want to make a hard line. Excellent. Excellent. We're thinking. We're thinking. Okay. Uh, who is the subject or the actor? Someone else. Someone else who has not yet tried. Righteous. Righteous. Kaya, okay, thank you. Righteous. So here we have the actor. And then by faith. I want someone to try. I'm not going to tell you the relationship. I'm not going to tell you whether it's green or blue or red or purple. You give me what type of, of function in the sentence and also the type. So let's take a minute here. Look at your handout. What is this? What is the color? What is the color? And what is the type? Someone, someone look at your handout. And you, you give me 
what you think. Is it the violet and purple? Okay, so uh, describing verb. Yes, excellent. So, so it's you're absolutely right. So this is describing a verb. Now, now, Kaya, since you, since you are fearless, what what kind of description? What kind of qualification? What kind? What kind of dis, of describing? Agency. Is it okay, agency? So let, we're close. So let's think. Agency. Now, an agency. There is agency refers to a person, right? So an agent is a person. Just think agent person. Is is faith a person? No, so it No, no, no. You're so close. You're close though. So it cannot be agent, but look at another category that's close. Look at another category that's close. I want you to take your time and look at it. Is it a cause? Okay, I heard it. Uh, someone said, someone said means. Mean. Let's look at why, let's look at why it could be a means. Uh, let's go down here. Mean. The relationship describes the way or the instrument by which the action occurs. Wow, that sounds good. This is an impersonal way. With, by, with, or by means of. Wow, so let's go back here. The righteous shall live by the means of faith. That, so you see how we're gonna use another word in the categories to try to make it fit. Ah, it must be means, it must be means. It must be means. So the righteous are not, we, we think of righteous as, this is um, uh, obedience, To law. So you would think the righteous shall live by their obedience to the law. They shall live, they shall live by their law keeping. And actually in the Old Testament, it says, no, the righteous shall live by faith. Very powerful. Very powerful. There's no, there's no even reference to the righteous shall live by faith and by works, right? The righteous shall live by faith and by works. No, that's wrong. So when someone says, yeah, you have to have faith, you have to have works, the implication is that they're side by side, and that's wrong. Rather, the image is this. This is a person. Internally, there is faith in Christ. This is internal. Okay? Then the external, the external is works. Okay? But the works must be, sorry, I'm getting some feedback. The works are a result. It's a result. The means is faith. Is everyone tracking with me? Everyone's tracking with me here. So this is, again, this is, Theology 101, this is deep, this is good, <laughs> right? And so we actually will see this, we will actually see this pattern throughout. And so uh, for those who attended Christianity 101 and Romans chapter 8, right? The, 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 the faith, the spirit was the internal, the result, the outworking was the works, but the works were merely the result. They're not part of the, the salvation, okay? So you're confusing means, source, and result. So this is why source, means, result 
are different categories and they cannot be confused. When you start confusing them, that's when the heresy starts coming in. That's when, that's when, that's, that's the work of Satan, okay? So I hope we can see this here, all right? Uh, any questions or comments or this make, this is, I hope this is making sense. I hope this is making sense. Okay, let's go on now. Let's practice on another passage. And we're going to really, I'm going to start calling upon you. I'm going to start calling upon you, all right? So we're going to start in Romans, turning your Bibles to Romans chapter 3, verse 19. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you how I break this apart. To look at sentence parts, this is how I break it apart. Okay, so we just have the text here. We'll just finish out our time tonight practicing through this. So I'm going to read the text, and then we're going to work through it, okay? If you have paper, if you have a computer, I would encourage you, start. Just follow my process and write down the, write down the steps. Write down the steps, and, and, and so you'll be able to start to see the, the method. Okay, so I'm going to read the Word of God first, and then we're going to break it down. And this is really picking up Romans 1, 16, 17. It's picking up. Just watch. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, look at that. Just, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight. Since through the law comes a knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been revealed, has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteous, righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and all are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. <laughs> this was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he passed over sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Okay, so this is how we're going to break it down, okay? First thing I'm going to do, it's like, oh my goodness, Tim, there's so much. How do, I, how do I do this? How do I do this? Okay, first thing I wanted to see here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first, I'm just going to, I'm going to highlight all of the keys to separate out the sentence. We have a capital letter N here. We have a comma here. We have a comma here. We have a period here. We have a, a capital letter here. We have a comma here. We have a period here. So I, that's the first thing. You highlight all the commas, all the punctuation, the capital, and the periods. Okay, so then this is how we break it down. Okay, so I'm going to go here. So I lost, I lost those because of, but that's fine. So I'll just erase this here. At least you can see that. So, so I've just separated out Romans 3, 19 and 20 based upon independent sentence, okay? Everyone can do that. There are different sentences, okay? The next is I look at the commas, okay? So I separate out because of the comma, So does everyone see that? I just broke out, I broke out the two sentences, okay? Now the next thing I'm going to do, because this here is dependent upon, 
right? Because it's part of the previous, I'm just going to indent this, okay? So one, two, three, four, five. I'm just showing that The main sentence in 3.19 is, now we know that whatever the law speaks, it speaks to those under the law. Then you have a comma, and then, so that, that's, that's, that's like a clarification. So it's, it's the, these are, this is supporting, okay? Everyone making sense? Everything making sense? So now I could preach a sermon on two, I could preach a sermon on 3.19, and 220. Everyone can do that. That's not hard. You're just looking at commas, you're looking at periods, and now we're getting to we're getting to sentence structure. We're getting to we're getting to it. Okay. So let's just again let's let's just indent this so that it's clear. Since. So now we just broke it out. We broke it out. Okay. We still have a ways to go. It's still stressful. I'm not trying to make saying it's not, but at least we have a direction here. Okay. And this is how I would work through every passage, especially in the letters. This is how I would do it. And this is the, the, the your, your outline is just going to be revealed before your eyes. So let me just erase this really quick. Question. Does anyone have a question? Now, looking at the sentence here. Okay, so we're looking at the main, we're looking at the main verb here. Okay, we're looking for the main verb of the main sentence here. Okay. I'm going to start reading. Now we know that. This has to be the main idea. No. Yeah. Now we know that. Okay. So let's, let's go back to our handout. I want to look at what type of word is no. I'm going to, I'm sorry. I, I, well, there it is. No, we're doing. <laughs> Let's go to verb. Here we go. So I'm going to get, I'm going to go down the list. It's not an action. Knowing is not an action. There's no action there. Command is not a command. Ah, knowing. Wow. It's right there. This is a verb that describes personal knowledge of someone, experiential knowledge, or a particular fact of information. That sounds like what we're going to be given. And then we have this content. I'm just going to circle this word. That. That whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law. So let's, let's go now and look. So, so we have the verb. We have this that whatever the law speaks, it speaks under the law. And so that's interesting. Let's, let's identify before we go to object or discuss object. Let's look at who is the actor? Who is the one knowing? Ah, obviously the one who is knowing is we. So this is the actor. And this is the knowing. We, with knowing the actor and knowing, or you could say subject because there isn't, there isn't really a, an action occurring here. You could also put subject if you chose. What is the content? So now we're looking for, with knowing, we're looking for content. What is the content of knowing? So and then whenever, maybe you want to make a note here. Whenever you have a content verb, you're going to look for the, uh, whenever you have a knowing verb, you're going to want to know what is the content, the person of that verb, okay? It's either gonna be a person or it's gonna be a fact or some experiential, okay? So, so we have that, that clue in the word that. Let's go back to our, 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 our handout. All right, so I'm gonna go back here to object. So I'm looking at object here. It's not a direct object, not an indirect object, ah content. This is the specific substance of a knowledge statement. So look here, that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. This is the content. Okay. So the key word, maybe I'll add later in, the, in my second edition, the key word is that. 
the key word is that. So for all content statements, you're looking for this word that. The content that we know is this. All right. Now we could go into we could go into further detail. It's more it gets a little more tricky. Whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law. Okay, so we could go into more relationships within there. That's fine, but not necessarily. You don't have to. Okay, I, I wouldn't require that. But but uh, but you know, just to give some more context, we could say. Um, This is a description here. Because of this word who, and it's qualifying those. Well, who are under the law? But we're, you're going to see from, from three that it's both Jew and Gentile or all people. Okay, this is just looking at Romans 2, Romans, uh, this would be looking at Romans, Romans 1, 18 to 3, 18. Okay. Any questions or comments? Does, it, does everyone feel like they're over their head? Go ahead, Danny, go ahead. How did you go to uh, you, you mentioned the verse to, uh, so I'm just I was giving a theological we're, we don't have to do this now but I was just clarifying who it is that are under the law I'm just you would want to look back to see who it is that are under the law Romans uh, 1 one one eighteen to three eighteen essentially says that all are under the law. Jews, uh, here. Let's just go. I'll, I'll give an example here. Let's go to Step Bible. So we can go to Romans. Romans two. I was just giving a conclusion. So, so, for example, just reading here, verse 12, for all who have sinned without the law will perish without the law, and all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law, for it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be justified. Justified and it's Gentiles and Jews. The, 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 it's written on the Gentiles' heart. Okay, so I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't want to go here because of the time, but just to, it would, I guess it's helping in clarifying who it is that are under the law. Okay, that word, that word, that, 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 we know and we know that, that must be very important. Yes, excellent. So whenever we have, whenever we have, this combination excellent observation henry excellent observation so we know so so the previous context we know that whatever the law says it speaks to those who are under the law okay so everyone uh Whatever the law is saying, it's speaking to those under the law, and we're all under the law. So what is the purpose of it speaking? What is the purpose? So I'm kind of giving it away here. Um, uh, this, we have this here, and this word here. So that the remote may be stopped. Yeah, so this is a, uh, this is giving a, a purpose, purpose one. So let's just go back to our, our handout just so that you can see where I'm getting that. 
So if we come down now to if we come down to here, I'm going to go to purpose. I click on purpose. Look at the keywords here. So that that so there is a little bit of overlap. Sometimes you will, it will uh, that will not be a content and will be also giving purpose, Henry. So there is. There is a, a, a caveat there, but the no and the that is the key. No and that right next to each other, that's the key, okay? But we have purpose here, purpose, so that. Purpose one, so that what? What is the purpose of the law speaking to those under the law? What is the purpose? What is the purpose of the law? Is the purpose of the law that that everyone can actually be saved by the law? Action, action. This is an action here. This is the object. So who is stopping the mouth from speaking? Who is the actor here? Personification. Who is preventing the mouth from speaking, technically? God the Father. Okay, ultimately it's God the Father, but thinking about... The law. The law, the law, right? The law is the one, the law is the one that's stopping the mouth. Right, when someone is in the sin is exposed and, they, and they're caught red-handed and the evidence is presented, the mouth is stopped. <laughs> yeah, because the Jews, Jews have the written law and the Gentiles have the written law also in their hearts. Yes, exactly, exactly. Excellent, excellent. So... Purpose number one, every mouth may be stopped. And then if you notice here, and, and, and. So the so that number one, mouth may be stopped. Number two, this is purpose number two. To be held accountable. Huh? May be held accountable to God. That's yes. Nice. Yes. We could say action, or actually, we could probably say state. I actually prefer being held accountable as a state, right? Again, the object, the, the world is not the one, the, the world is the one that's being held accountable, right? So, again, this is the object. Who is the one holding the whole world accountable to God? Still the law. Uh, yes. Yes. The law is holding the whole world accountable to God. Is this making sense for everyone? Is, is, is it okay? Okay. Okay, Pa? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, Pastor. Let's let's take a break. Okay, we'll do one minute and then everyone can come back. So one minute. Everyone can come back. How do you feel? Do you feel stressed? Do you feel like, oh man, I'm getting this. It's coming. Getting this faster. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. So, we'll do so from verse 19, there are only two kinds of people here in this world. Those who who try to who try to apply uh, to ob, um, obedience to the law as their salvation, and another is uh, by works. Yeah. 
for salvation. So there are only two kinds of people here in this world. Yeah. No, so, and, and, so that both, so that the whole world, the, world, the whole world. Yeah, so no, that's a great observation, Henry, because what you're seeing then is that, is this. Great observation. I, th that's really good, Henry. The, the, those under the law is then clarified. See that? The whole world will be held accountable. So those under the law, which are Jew and Gentile, it's really the whole world. Yeah. And really, it's to, to clarify what you're saying, Henry, it's those that are just on their own. You're on your own no matter what. You're under the law. There's another way. But un, under the category of law by yourself, yeah, that's it. Or there's this other way, perhaps. Perhaps we'll see that. I don't want to get it away. Okay, let's try. Let's try verse 20. Let's try verse 20. Let's look, let's first focus on this, this, uh, for by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight. What is the main verb or the main action? Does someone want to give me the main verb or the main action? Okay. Justified. Justified. Uh, okay. What were you going to say? Oh, will be justified. Yeah. So, so. Danny is correct in that the, the very specific verb is justified, but we're really looking at, because we want to identify all the words, um, uh, it's really will be justified for our purposes. This is the, the, the action. What is... What is... Who is the actor? Who is the actor? The human being. Are you sure? Are you is sure? The law? Yeah, a, no human being. Will be justified, but the human being is not the one that's... God? No. Uh, yes. It's God, right? It's God. This is, uh, think about this. Uh, when we ask the question, the actor, we can ask the question if it's concerning justified. We can ask, this is uh, only the judge can justify. Only the judge can justify. Or another word for this, we can, we can say declare righteous declare to be in the right Diba. so then if, if, if it's a judge it must be God and notice here notice here but we have this phrase in his sight. Henry, <laughs> those who are doing the Bible's big sto story, in his sight, who do we talk about seeing? The seeing and assessing. See, you know, who is the judge? <laughs> it's God. Yeah, right. From the garden, he looks and he sees, right? And God saw that it was good. No one will be justified in his sight. This idea of the judge is assessing. The judge is looking. Wow. So we could say this is the, the, the location. If you want to talk about location or maybe reference because we're dealing with the sight of God in the sight of God. Um, so then who is the object? Who is the object of this justification? Human being. Human being. Excellent.
Now, now, we have, we've come back to these words here. Someone want to take a crack at it? What is, what are these words? Who wants to try this? Who wants to take a swing? Who wants to take a punch? Who wants to try to, to break the pinata? By works of the law, who wants to try that? Works of the law. So there's two phrases here. I'm going to split them up. I'm going to split them up just so that you can see the depth. You don't have to split them up, but I'm going to split them up. So, so let's look at, I'm going to split them up here. There's by works and of the law. So by works, what is by works? Is it purple or blue? Is, it, is by works describing, is it, is it connected or is it more describing a verb or is it describing a, a noun? Describing a uh, noun. <laughs> Well, it's, uh, is it really connected or is it kind of on its own? It's connected. Uh, him. Huh? I think it's connected. Yeah, it's an adverb. Yeah, so this is an adverb. So it is connected. Yes. Yeah, this is, is it means pastor? Yes. We, you should have, been, yes, that's, uh, Kaya is correct. This is a means. And the key is there, by. So, so, look at the connection here. No one will be justified by the means of works. Does everyone see that? The works, the works cannot justify. They cannot be a means by which someone, the judge will justify. Okay. Now look here, this of the law, does everyone see how this is modifying? This is now modifying works, which works? We could say, we're gonna use this idea of reference. The works with reference to what? Right, because we are saved by the work of Christ. If it, if, let's just change this. If this were to say of Christ, by the works of Christ, we will be justified. Do you see that? So we can flip it around. So it's not that in, it's not that by works, period, someone will not be justified. It's by works of the law. So if these are the, if this is the work of Christ, we can be justified. What I'm trying to get at is that this is really modifying. Is everyone tracking with me? I don't, I don't mean to be confusing. Which works will no one be justified? The works with reference to the law. Okay? So we can ask that question if you want to say which. That's dealing with reference. Let me just take a moment. Does anyone have a question? Is this not making sense? Please do not hesitate to ask a question. Pretty much you mentioned earlier, we can re we can reward the statement, no? Yeah, yeah. We can reword the statement to make it more clear, or clearer, I should say clearer. Yeah. So we could say, um, let's let's re let's rewrite it here. The God should... will not justify. Any human being through their works, works, works. Oh, 
of the lower. So now we're, we're getting it very specific, very clear. We're re so this could be something that you could do to give a major point when you're preaching, reword it so it's clear and you have the actor, you have the verb, you have the object, you have the mean. So this is actor, action, means. So anyone who's saying works and faith justify, wrong, no, sorry, this is the clearest of any scripture. The context, the context is a court room setting. There is the presence of a law. There is a presence of a judge. There is a presence of a verdict. Comparing to James, there is don't, for no don't forget the accused. Yes, yes, the accused. So, so when people contrast James and Romans, we sh should we clarify the clear of Romans with the maybe a little bit unclear of James, or should Romans clarify James? This is the clear. This is why one of the hermeneutic, uh, Augustine's principle, the, un, the clear explains the unclear. Now, Sigurado, my view is that really, Paul says the exact same thing as James in the Gospel of Romans. So I'm not saying the two are against, but some people will debate it. And so what I'm saying is, is that in the debate, what is more clear? What is clearer? Romans is crystal. So you can either say the word of God has a mistake. You, it would be very difficult to reinterpret Romans in line of James. It just, it's, impo it's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. This is explicit. Now watch this. <clears throat> We're going to come back to this word in a moment. Let's look here now. So, does someone want to try? Does someone want to try this? Who wants to try? Main verb. Someone else. Kaya and Danny have tried. Does someone else want to try? Um, Mark, do you want to try? Where's the, where's the verb, Mark? This one you got it in. I think it, it is, comes from, comes knowledge comes knowledge okay so let's just am I right yeah so the, the the action is just comes close very close mm -hmm. now actually this is not really good english <laughs> sometimes the translations are okay so actually the greek there's not even a a verb there so they're adding the verb it's fine it's fine so comes knowledge, so uh, yeah, so the, the object, what comes is, the object is knowledge, and then there's an implied, there is an implied actor. Who is the actor? Implied. Actually, it's, it's really weak. I mean, the, the law, uh, let's just leave this out here. The, it's a little bit difficult here. The, the, the law is the means, right? The, it's through the law that there comes a knowledge of sin. Okay? So if we're looking at the actor, what is the one that's bringing the knowledge of sin? It's also, in a sense, the law, right? It's the, the, the law. In, in a sense, it's the law is also the actor. Does everyone see that? Or we could say, we could say that we are the actors because the knowledge is being given to us. We are becoming aware of the knowledge of sin through the law. So let's rewrite this. 
early first part of this verse. Yeah. Now, while we are referring to works of the law, why would we consider it like work in a, in, in a general sense? Because the verse itself is really referring exactly to the words of the law. But as for most people, like the Catholics, they would understand words of the law as somehow equal to good works. So, so, you, so my question, you're saying that the good works are different than the works of the law, or you're saying it's the same? Maybe that, that's how, they, that's how they, they think about it. So how would you reconcile the idea that the works of the law is actually is good works or something <laughs> fundamentally love god love others that's all your good works <laughs> remember the law the fundamental if you can reduce the law what are the two greatest commandments love the lord your god with all your heart mind and soul number two love your neighbor as yourself so, when they, so good works. That includes all of it, right, Diba? There's, there's no escape. But for other religion who does not have any God. So, so that's why it's so important for us. That's why it's so important for us. That's, why, that's actually why I brought up the importance here of, of this. In Romans, um, for when Gentiles do not have the law, uh, by nature, do what the law requires. They are a law to themselves. Verse 15. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts. So what Paul's argument is that, there's, is that, is that everyone is under the law. So even if the Catholic were to say, you know, well, no, yeah, I can't do that. It's my good works. That's the whole point. The, 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 the law is the good works. I mean, the, the law in Israel's day covered everything. It covered religious worship. It covered moral, and it covered it covered lahat lahat. It's everything. Okay. So that, yeah. So that that should explain all. Because yeah. in, in 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 the law itself, it 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 compasses both social and religious uh, good things, something like that. Yeah, and, and actually, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you a little bit. Uh, this is this is actually this is a uh, this is bonus. This is bonus here. Actually, what 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 the author of Hebrews says is that is that there is an eternal law in heaven. Okay, and this is reflected down in the Mosaic law. And it's coming into the present in the in, in um, uh, um, in in the new covenant. But in reality, this is pointing back to the same thing. You you see that? So that's why we speak of that's why we speak of of even Paul says the, the Gentiles they don't have the Mosaic law but they have God's eternal law written on their hearts. And that law is, is now being revealed in the new covenant. There isn't, there isn't this different view of morality through the history. It's always been one morality. Okay, there's always been one morality. Even Jesus, you've heard it said, but it's, you know, I say to you, it was never that in the Old Testament it was okay to lust in your heart, and now you can't. It's always been like that. They were just abusing, abusing, and using they were abusers and users, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, and that's why it's that's why a lot of these 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 fundamental truths are so foundational for gospel proclamation. People need to understand that just because they're keeping the laws of the Philippines does not mean they're keeping God's eternal law. Just because the Jews claimed to keep the Mosaic law, which they didn't, but they claimed. They weren't keeping God's eternal law, plus covetousness, idolatry. This is it's so important for our gospel witness. And so this comes into play with the Catholic, with Roman Catholics. They'll say, oh, no, it's a different law. No, it's the same. You're, you're using your good works to try to justify yourself 
with faith. You'll say faith and good works. My faith and my church baptism, my faith in the sacraments, baptisms, uh, marriage, Lord's Supper. And, and those are works. Those are works of the law. Where are you getting the law from? It's from God. It's from, you know, you, you, what I would say, Ray, is you're, 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 you're playing with loopholes. You're trying to find loopholes. You're, you're, you're playing with semantics. That, that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to, but just yeah. for sure people would always try to make excuse, but it's a different thing, right? You're speaking about the law, but in, in the end, we're talking about the eternal law. It yeah. encompasses everything. You know, I brought that up to a, a Roman Catholic I was sharing the gospel with in Kavita because, you know, he was like, oh, yeah, I'm a good person. Da, 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 da. And then I just said, we were talking, I just said, you know, you know, some of the good works are going to church and, 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 and listening to the, the priest. Yeah, those are good works. I said, but, you know, the two greatest commandments that Jesus said is to love God with all your heart, with your whole being, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And I said, not very many people are loving their neighbor here. And he just started laughing. He's like, yes, we don't love our neighbor. <laughs> That's why coming back here, if you say love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and love your neighbor as yourself, people wrote, they have grudges. Tell a guy, you're not loving your neighbor. Let's be honest. <laughs> Repent yeah, and believe. Yeah, short, yeah. but... Go ahead, Ray. No, I was saying we all fall short. Yes, too. we all fall short. We all fall short. Tell a guy. Okay. Um, this is a little bit difficult because really... The, the Greek is just literally through the law, knowledge of sin. Through the law. So actually, uh, you could just say action or through the law is knowledge of sin. So there isn't really an actor. It's just the means through the law comes the object, knowledge of sin. So really what the, what the, what the law is doing is it is bringing a knowledge and what kind of knowledge is the law giving us a knowledge of god is the law giving us a knowledge of nature no it's giving us again reference knowledge of sin is coming through the law knowledge with reference to what knowledge about what sin sin Pastor, um, question, could we, I mean, rephrase it to man comes to know sin through the law? Yes, you could also say that. Yes, excellent. Excellent. Let's write that down. Is that what you said, Kaya? Man comes to know sin through the law? Yes. Yes, and this is, a, this is an excellent example of how we are re, rewording, and this could be in an outline. This could be in an outline. This could be your outline. This is, your, your just, this is forming your exegetical outline. We're already in that preparation stage for the exegetical outline. You're rewording, you're identifying the structure, and you're rewording it in a clear way. What is... What is this word? We've already talked about it. What is that word? Since. Knuckles. Yes. Who is that? Shoni or Dario? Shoni and Dario. <laughs> Dario. Good job. Excellent work, Dario. Excellent. Cause. Excellent. So it's coming back up to here. For by, let's read this again. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight because through the law comes a knowledge of sin. And so the law only's benefit is to, is to give a knowledge of sin. The law does not give you the actual ability to be justified. Think about that for a second. The, the law only reveals sin. It cannot save you. That's what it's saying. That's the connection 
between these two here. By the works of the law, no human being will be justified in God's sight because through the law comes knowledge of sin. Meaning to say that the law lacks ability. And this is some food for thought. This will be further picked up in Romans 7. Because the temptation would be to say, oh, the law is evil. The law is evil. It's bad. If it's just going to give me knowledge of sin, it's bad. And Paul says, no, 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 no. The law is holy and pure and good. The problem is that we're enslaved. <laughs> oh, it's just so amazing. The, 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 Paul is, I mean, the spirit through Paul is just so phenomenal. Read Romans 7 in this context. Maybe tonight after you get off here. You're going to go crazy. You're going to go crazy. Okay. All right. So. Um, this is, it's already getting late. It's 842. I'm going to stop tonight. Okay. Um, your homework, which I'm going to post, I think I already posted is to do this, to do this on your verse and hand it in. So you can do it by hand and just take a picture and then send it to me or scan it and send it to me. Heavenly Father, the Lord, we thank you so much for your presence. And, uh, God, you know, and we thank you that every time, uh, Nagihimo kami hindi nga nga amon study about your word and the Lord we thank you for this kind of opportunity nga ginatag ni mo that every one of us come to know you more through Pastor Tim and everyone nga attending this class Lord keep us in your presence Lord God so that every one of us may continue to learn more from you and Continue to share your word to other people, you know, on Lord God. Uh, thank you so much for the great uh, opportunity, the great uh, love that we have received from you. Uh, you sent Pastor Tim to us to teach how to study your word so that uh, we can share this uh, grace of your salvation to other people, Lord God. Lord, uh, as we continue to live. Thank you that your grace uh, always come to us every morning, every day, you know, and thank you so much that as we go home tonight, as we take a rest, uh, your presence continue to be with us and your uh, Holy Spirit continue to guide us, to give us wisdom about your word and the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, that given to us for us to have life eternally, you know. Lord God, thank you so much. This we ask and this we turn back to you. Babalik na muli nga dahil ni mo gino. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay.